Well, good day and welcome to another Model Railroad Academy Facebook event. I'm Ron Marsh, a contributor here at Model Railroad Academy and your host for today. And today we're going to be talking about wiring your layout for DCC and also doing some uh, short management protection on your layout. Now, I know that electrical work and wiring is a subject that can be daunting. It can be a, a little bit uh, overwhelming and uh, can be downright confusing for some people. And I'm going to do my best to, to try to help take some of that confusion and some of that fear away today as I show you how to wire up a, a main bus wire for your layout. Uh, I'm also going to show you uh, one means, not the only means, but one means of helping to protect your layout against short circuits. Uh, now, I will be the first to say there are there are other ways of, of doing this. What I'm going to show you today is a very old method. It's a tried and true method. It's a very inexpensive method. Uh, there are certainly some other methods, and I'll, I'll talk about those as we go. But uh, specifically, I want to talk about how to get a, the main bus wire run for your layout. I'm going to show you how I do it on my layout in a way that works really, really well for me. And I'll also tell you kind of why I do it the way that I do. So let's go ahead and take a look down at our workbench. As I've got this little, this little mock-up uh, kind of set up here, uh, and this represents uh, the wiring underneath my layout. This is kind of how the, the wiring works, and I'm going to show you uh, as we put part of it together here in a few moments. But I want you to notice, first of all, these two uh, large uh, wires, or red, red and black wires, uh, that run across this board. These, these wires represent the main power bus for my layout. And, and when I say uh, power bus, what I mean is they are the, the primary wires that carry electrical power as well as a signal from my DCC system around my layout. And then my track is connected ultimately to these uh, to be powered and also to receive those uh, commands, the signals from the DCC system. And of course, uh, you know, it's not DC, so there's not like a positive and a negative. Uh, but we, we do use a red and a black because we want to keep those those wires separated. We want to make sure that that the red always runs to one particular rail and the black to the other. So you can either do red to the rear and black to the front, or red to the front and black to the back. Whatever whatever uh, <laughs> works better for you. Whatever you can remember. Uh, so so if we think about that, we'll just think of this end down here where my hand is right now. Uh, think about this end connecting to my DCC system. So these wires would connect right into the main power output on my DCC system. The other direction, these wires would be running uh, around the rest of my layout. And so uh, th these are going to run the full length of wherever I have track on my layout. And here in the middle, you're going to see I have a pair of small terminal strips. These are two-pole uh, barrier type terminal strips. And these uh, I, I use as an easy way uh, of connecting my track into the main bus. Now, you can, depending on the size of your layout and how you like to do things, if you want, uh, you can actually connect track feeders right into the main power bus if you prefer to do that, uh, which means you wouldn't need the terminal blocks if you did that. Uh, uh, and, but it also means that you're going to be uh, soldering or connecting wires right into that main power bus all over your layout. I, I like to avoid doing that uh, because I don't, I don't. I like to keep my power bus uninterrupted. Uh, and there are a couple other reasons that I'll explain as we go. For me, every time I want to have an electrical block, and when I say a block, I mean a section of track that is electrically isolated from every other section of track. Uh, that that allows me to be able to uh, to control uh, and, and manage short circuits and, and power within that block in a way that doesn't affect any of the rest of the layout. Uh, it'll allow me to do like block detection for signaling. Uh, lots of reasons why we want to have isolated blocks around our layout. So for every block on my layout, I'm going to have a, a pair of of these uh, uh, terminal strips like this, the two pole barrier strips. They work really, really good. And, and I want you to notice that the, the red wire, the main, is running straight through one, one pole. So this wire is connected directly to this wire as the main bus continues on around the layout completely uninterrupted. Same with the black wire. It comes straight through the poles of, of this terminal strip and continues uninterrupted around the layout. 
Uh, what I like to do for the, the blocks on, on my layout or uh, an area that has several industries or a yard is I like to connect uh, a, a, what I call a sub bus. Uh, and you'll see these two wires that come off here at an angle are, are represent a sub bus on, on my layout. And, and this is where things seem to get a little confusing for people. Uh, because I don't want to connect my track feeders directly into my main bus wire, I like to keep it clean and uninterrupted. Uh, I connect this smaller bus, and this is a smaller wire. These are 12 gauge wires in this case. Uh, these wires coming out for this sub bus for one block on my layout are 18 gauge wires, uh, which are plenty. Um, and, and I connect them in, and these will only go a short distance, maybe two or three feet, depending on, on what is needed. And then my track feeders will connect directly to this sub bus, so that if, if I ever have a problem, I know it's going to be here. Uh, and if I ever had to replace some wire because I had some sort of an electrical problem, I would just replace the sub bus. I wouldn't have to take the main bus out, and it wouldn't affect other parts of the layout. Uh, since it is uh, isolated from from the main bus, I, I hope that that is is as clear as I, I could make it. Uh, so you'll see here on this the sub bus, I've got a pair of small wires right here, and and these wires would would represent track feeders. And you can see I've got them soldered in and uh, protected with uh, a, a little bit of heat shrink tubing. Uh, I also uh, often will just use suitcase connectors or insulation displacement displacement connectors to connect my, uh, my, my track feeders into this sub bus. Uh, again, the sub bus only goes out the distance it needs to go to, to feed one block or one industrial section or one area of the layout. Now, you see that I've got the sub bus connected into a separate pole uh, from the main bus on, on, my, uh, uh, on, on these terminal connectors. Uh, I need to get them connected to the main bus so I can get power going to this particular uh, district. On the, the block wire, uh, I simply connect that with uh, some sort of, of a jumper. Now, I've got these little jumpers right here that you can purchase uh, to work with uh, these terminal strips. You can also do this with just a small piece of wire if you wanted to wire it between a couple of poles. But this jumper literally uh, just slides into the, uh, the terminal strip and it connects uh, two of the poles together. Now, I'm going to take that wire loose and then you can see. Here's the jumper. Literally goes into the screws on one side. And now it is connecting those two together. I'll take my main bus wire and connect it in here with that. And uh, I'll just tighten those screws down a little bit. And now what you see on the black wire is that is that the, the wire is continuing through this pole out to the rest of the main bus. But through that jumper, it's also connected to this pole. And so it comes, the electricity flows out through this sub bus and to my track. Now, on the red wire, I do something a little bit different because this is how I do uh, my short protection and short management. Now, I want to pause right here and say that a lot of people will use some sort of a, um, an actual breaker uh, for this that if you have a short circuit, will actually completely throw a breaker, just like a, a breaker in your house, and it completely disconnects uh, the, the, the power. That is a good way to go. Uh, it, it's, it's a little more expensive, and so that's why I, I kind of like to do what I'm going to show you. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a tried and true method from back in the days of, 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 uh, of all DC model railroads, and that is using not a, a breaker, but something for the sake of short management. And what I use is an 1156 tail light bulb. And here you can see one right here. Just this is the same kind of bulbs that uh, you may use in the tail lights of your car or truck. Uh, again, this is an 1156. Uh, I, I don't know all the, the, the details, the specs. You'd have to look it up as far as uh, how much amperage this actually uh, it takes to, 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 to burn, uh, and therefore how much protection it would give as opposed to other tail light bulbs. Uh, but I've always used 1156 bulbs, and they've always worked really, really well in HO and in N scale. And, and what I do with the bulb is I wire it in series into this main, uh, to connect the main bus into the sub bus. 
And what I mean by in series is you'll see here on this bulb, I have taken this wire and I have soldered it to the side of uh, this uh, of this bulb, and I've taken the another wire and soldered it to the the pole or the post of this bulb, so that the, these two wires would feed through the bulb. Uh, but I don't connect them into the black wire on on the bus, but only into the red wire. So I'm going to put one of these red wires for my light bulb in here with the the, the main bus. Uh, I'm going to tighten that down. And then the other side, uh, I'm going to connect into uh, the, the pole that goes to my sub bus. So that now power flowing to this wire uh, is actually flowing through this bulb. Now, you, you might ask, well, doesn't that make the bulb light up? And the answer is no, it doesn't because uh, these are going to the separate rails of the track and whenever a train is running on the track, the train is using that electricity. Uh, the the, uh, the resistance that is there keeps the bulb from lighting up. Electricity just flows through the bulb out to the track. But what happens is when there's a short circuit, and then the power jumps up because there's less resistance there. Uh, and then the bulb will light up and it will absorb uh, most of the, the amperage, most of the current that is running through that short circuit and it will uh, cause, uh, it will keep that short circuit from getting really, really hot very quickly. Now, I, I, I do want to throw a disclaimer in here uh, because some people don't like a system like this because it doesn't completely break the current. And if you left the short circuit in place, even with this bulb burning, ultimately it would begin to get hot and it could do damage, but it doesn't do so quickly. Uh, which means that as long as you don't leave your railroad running and unattended when a short circuit happens, then with this system, two things happen. Number one, the bulb comes on, which shows you that the, the, there is a short circuit in that particular block that is protected by this bulb. Remember, this bulb is, bulb is only protecting one block on my main on my layout, uh, the block served by these two wires. Uh, so that tells me there's a short circuit on that block. Uh, it absorbs most of the, the current so that it's not quickly overheating wherever the short circuit is. And it gives me time to go and remove whatever is causing the short circuit, the locomotive, a tool that's been laid down, whatever the situation may be. Um, now, if, if you run trains and leave them while you uh, observe uh, or, or entertain guests and allow them to, to uh, just run trains on, on your layout without being attended, then you may want a, a, a true circuit breaker in case you had a problem so that something doesn't overheat. Um, but if as long as you attend your, your trains and you, you never leave your layout running unattended, uh, this system is inexpensive and it works really, really well. Now, I want you to notice this little clamp that I that I hold my bulbs in with. This is just a little cable clamp. It's a half inch cable clamp. And what I've done is I've screwed it to, I screwed to the underside of my layout with a single short screw on one side. The other side is left loose. And, and that is a perfect holder for, for this bulb. It will hold it perfectly in place, and, but also makes it easy to remove if I if I ever need to, uh, to remove it. Um, and so this is, this is how I do short protection and short management on, on my layout. And I'm going to tell you, I've used this for 25 years and I'm still really sold on how it works. Uh, now, again, I never leave my layout running and unattended. That's just not something that I do. Uh, and so therefore this system works for me. The one other thing that I didn't mention that this system helps you do is by, by electrically isolating uh, various blocks on your layout, if I have a if I have a number of people operating on my layout, if I have a short circuit on one block, uh, that block is going to shut down. This bulb is going to light up. That block, nothing else in that block is going to work. But the rest of the layout will continue to run uninterrupted because the, the current is absorbed here. It's not going to throw the main breaker on my DCC system or 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 stop trains from running on other parts of the layout. Uh, so that's an, another advantage. Uh, you get the same advantage if you use a breaker, but but that's the, the reason one, one of the reasons why we want to break our layouts into uh, into electrically isolated blocks.
So again, understand that the main power bus that, that you often hear people talk about is, is what takes power and signal from your DCC system around the layout. And from it, we draw power and draw signal out to our layouts. I, I like to use a sub bus that goes to one particular block, which may be one section of the main line, or it may be an industrial area or a yard, and then track feeders, pairs of track feeders to go up and, and uh, solder to the rails uh, of my track to actually feed power to the track. So that is, is, is one system that uh, works really, really well for delivering power and signal, but also giving you some short management protection for, for your layout. I, again, I know I've said it several times, uh, I, I know this system may not be for everybody, but it's a simple system, it's an inexpensive system, and as long as you don't leave your trains running unattended, it works really, really well. Uh, so this may be the type of system you want to give a try as far as the short protection uh, with the 1156 taillight bulbs. Now, apart from that, the, the, the means of, of wiring with a, a main bus and using the sub bus to, to, to feed various blocks or, or industrial areas on your layout is a system that will work no matter what kind of short management. Even if you're using full breakers, you still want to use that same system for dividing your layout up into electrically isolated blocks uh, because it'll make your layout run a lot more efficiently. And again, if you're running operating sessions, if you do have a short in one part of the layout, it doesn't shut the whole layout down. Well, I hope that that is uh, helpful to you. I hope that that helps to reduce a little bit of confusion and, and, and maybe a little bit of fear on the part of some. Uh, this kind of electrical wiring for a layout is not difficult and uh, it is uh, actually something that can be a lot of fun whenever you find out that uh, you can make these connections and all of a sudden your track begins to work and your model railroad layout begins to come to life. So uh, I hope that, that those will be helpful to you and you'll employ them as you bring your model railroad to life. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today on this uh, Facebook video event. And I look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you all have a great day and uh, allow your trains to put a smile on your face today.